Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Monday to radar this morning, and our big high is in control across most of the inner mountains. So everything is being directed up and around the high, and there's actually a pretty substantial low sitting out here over the Pacific, hoping to kind of drive some of this precip, but that high is the, the blocking mechanism right now. It's very warm, and it's going to be dry across the inner mountain west for the next probably three days. Eventually, this low will come in and crash into the west coast on the 13th. Then that's what will dislodge the high. The high will move away, and we'll start to get into more of an active pattern. Over to satellite. So this is water vapor. Remember on this, your blacks, your oranges, your reds, that's your drier air. The moisture, the action is in the whites, the blues, the greens, and that's where the flow is. You can see the flow. Big area of low pressure out here just kind of sitting and waiting because right now it's all about this high pressure. Eventually the high moves away, moves in that direction. The low comes in behind it, sweeps in, and that will send waves of moisture and energy into Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona um, after we get past the 13th. That's when things will start to change. Here are my bullet points. So, all right, we talked about the big western high. Now, on the other side of it, across the east, we've got an, a deep eastern low, and this thing is strong. I'll show it to you on the pressure anomalies here in a second. Record cold, we've got snow out there, even lake effect. Um, so we're going to add to the northeast snow up there um, between today, tomorrow, and the 12th. And then out west, we've got the active flow on or after the 13th and it may be a split flow. I'll show you what that could mean coming up. Here are your best odds of snow, best odds of new snow for Colorado, Tahoe, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and Interior BC. Now I'm starting to add the signifiers for intensity. So L slash M in this case for Colorado would mean light to moderate accumulations on the 14th, light to moderate late 1718, and potentially heavy on 20, 21, and 22 heavy accumulations. So you can see what happens there in Tahoe. Heavy late 12, 13, moderate accumulations 19 and 20. So I won't go through all these, but you get the idea. Now in some of these locations, you're gonna have a, it's gonna be a little trickier because the, the air is gonna be pretty warm. And so some of these rain snow lines are gonna be running a little bit higher. And so you're really gonna have to be mid mountain or higher at some of these locations, especially through interior BC you'll want to be at the very highest of elevations. Um, let's take a look at uh, some of these uh, pressure anomalies. So these are up in the middle of the atmosphere, up at about 18,000 feet. This is today. Um, there's our big drop in pressures across the East Coast and all the way down into the, the deep south in Florida. I mean, this low is deep. I've been saying this the last few days. It's probably minus four or four standard deviations below the 20-year normal. That's how deep it is. I mean, it's way down here on the chart. Now out west, there's our big high with all the, uh, the reds, the oranges, and that's why we're so dry and so warm for right now. All right, moving into the future, here's 1114. You can see what happens, our high is dislodged. It's now in the upper Midwest, and look what we've got low here and lower the normal pressures right there. So kind of seeing a little bit of a split flow. So this is gonna hammer, this pattern will hammer the West Coast, Pacific Northwest, Washington State, Oregon, and the High Sierra. But what's going to happen is this low will probably take more of a Southern track. This low will kind of move across the Northern tier. So that's going to, it's really going to distribute the precipitation North and South with that type of split flow. Here's what it looks like even further down the road. Now this is on the 18th. Now this is a whole separate area of low pressure, but you can see uh, this one basically takes the middle of the road track. So it is much more active across the West after we get through the 13th with a couple different areas of low pressure, 14, 15, 16, and then 17, 18, 19, 20. So it is, I mean, this would represent a colder pattern with snow across a lot of the West. All right, let's look at the, uh, the forecast for integrated vapor transport. Now this is capturing that spike with that uh, precipitation. This is integrated vapor transport, central California coast. This is how we spot that atmospheric river. And that's a pretty big spike of moderate to strong intensity AR moisture right there. Another little spike behind it. So that's the low that hits the Sierra and then moves into the interior. So that's going to be an important area of low pressure. All right, here's the total precipitation. 
as if everything fell as liquid over a five period, five day period. So this runs us into the future all the way through basically Sunday of this upcoming weekend. Now initially, as this uh, restarts, notice it's all high pressure initially and then the pattern breaks on or after the 13th and then we start to see widespread precipitation from California to Nevada to Utah to Colorado, Wyoming, Idaho and Montana. How does that look uh, as snow? Well this is a 10 to 1 ratio. So initially very dry and then that the storm on the 13th, watch it as it comes in, hits the Sierra, Nevada, Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Colorado and Montana. So on this, anywhere you see that the dark purple, that's at least six inches. The bright pink is like a foot. And anywhere you see the white, like right there around Mammoth Mountain and the Sierra and some of the 14ers in the Sierra, that's two feet. Let's look at what else we've got. Again, this is a five day snow forecast. That's a, that's a two footer up there into uh, parts of uh, probably well over a foot there. And some of the high cascades of Washington, some pretty good numbers up there, probably a foot up there or more in interior BC. So that's how you read it. Um, here's my specific snow forecast. Now this runs us all, these are grand totals all the way out through the end of the 16th, 11-16. Uh, now these are at mid-mountain or higher, these totals. And <clears throat> notice uh, I did put Alieska on the map. I wanted to put that on the, the map because a lot of the time they, they get some of the biggest totals anywhere. Um, but only looking at three through the 16th there. So let's break this down. So you've kind of got, uh, it looks like the flow up into the northwest, and also the flow would break down towards the four corners. That's that split flow at times, but pretty good numbers up through the high Sierra, one to two feet, more over Mount Shasta through the 16th. Looks like one to three feet up here in the Pacific Northwest at the highest of elevations. Potentially still looking at 10 to 20 Red Mountain, Kicking Horse and Revelstoke. Less as you drop down into Alberta, Sunshine Village and Fernie. Three to six there, maybe 10 up on Marmot Basin. Uh, three to eight there through Northwest Montana. Uh, still looking at the highest amounts in Idaho, Central and North. Um, and now I've upped these numbers through Jackson and Grand Targhee, Big Sky up to about six, four to eight over the Wasatch with the six, sevens, eights up in Little and Big Cottonwood Canyon. Most of the snow in Colorado's western slope and within that, it's mainly in the San Juans in the southern mountains, looking at probably four to eight inches down there. Silverton, Red Mountain Pass, Telluride, down into Wolf Creek with maybe three, four inches through Crested Butte, Monarch, Snowmass, Aspen. Twos down here brought these numbers down a little bit over uh, northern New Mexico. That low just is not quite as robust as it uh, moves through that area. All right, let's check out the northeast. So this is how the northeast sees accumulation over time. And this is pretty significant. So this snow you see right here across the Great Lakes in the Midwest will be happening today, tomorrow. And that's lake effect off Lake Michigan, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario. So that's going to hit some of the favored areas up here, Tug Hill Plateau, um, you know, up around Snow Ridge and potentially up towards Lake Placid, Whiteface. And then there's decent snow, I mean, with two or three different waves up here in Vermont, New Hampshire. Uh, we could be looking at potentially up to maybe 10 12 inches, Tremblant gets a decent amount of snow out of this. So that's a really good looking pattern. Here's my official forecast for the Northeast, and this will take us through the 16th. So grand totals through the 16th. Um, the biggest numbers are obviously up here in Vermont, northern New Hampshire. Um, that's where you're looking at potentially 6 to 10 inches of accumulation. Snow Ridge is a little bit of a question mark. I mean, you're definitely going to be in the bullseye. It's just like how much will be rain versus snow. So we'll see, but um, man, the, the great conditions up here at Jay Peak continue. Killington needs snow. Uh, Tremblant gets about eight inches of accumulation. All right, let's look at the uh, the snow plume. So this is Mount Washington up there, and this is the long range. This is an this is what you call an ensemble mean, and you're looking at about 11 inches through November 25th. Pretty steady accumulation throughout the period. This is Jay Peak, I mean, just banner conditions. I mean, look at these numbers, 16 inches by November 25th. So uh, look at the air bars are up around 20, 24 inches on the extreme, looking really good. All right, back out west, Jackson, Wyoming, 
we get into a very active period, but initially it's pretty it's pretty dry with this area of high pressure through about the 14th. Then the acceleration up ensemble means 17 by November 25th. Air bars are up around two feet. So the flow really turns and favors that area. Um, Berthoud Pass, Colorado. Very uh, dry conditions through about the 14th with high pressure. I mean, that's really the formula for the West. High pressure initially. Then we get into a much more active pattern and we start to see some accumulation over Berthoud Pass. And just for fun, let's look at Denver, Colorado, 5280. Very dry through about the 15th with that high pressure. And then we start to see the chances for snow all the way down into Denver start to increase after the, probably the 15th, 16th. And this actually generates 4.6 on the ensemble mean through November 25th. So we'll see because we still haven't seen our first snow, not even close in the Denver metro area. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this, uh, this mountain weather update on this Monday. Appreciate you tuning in here. Take care and have a great day.